SREB Project-Based Learning incorporates six powerful practices. This video will focus on one of those practices. Engaging students in a collaborative problem-solving process, where students collaborate throughout the PBL unit, use a problem-solving process to solve the overarching problem, and learn content as needed for that phase of the process. And so this is mounting on the back. Yeah, we need to get to this rear headlight right here just to see. At the heart of every PBL unit is an intriguing problem for students to solve. Layering a collaborative problem-solving process, such as the design process, within a PBL unit helps students to internalize thinking skills necessary for success in today's workplace. At the Wood County Technology Center, students are in the prototyping phase for their PBL on designing therapeutic cars for kids who lack mobility. Which, so which car do you guys, are you guys working on? We have Gracie. You have Gracie. Yeah, the Pink Jeep. We began with brainstorming just among us. We know that um, from the therapeutic service class suggestions that our child likes soft changing lights and music, so we're, that's why we implicated that into the vehicle. Then the next step of the process after brainstorming is to start sketching out your ideas being a solid foundation of what that idea would look like so that you can better describe it to the whole group and then starting to prototype those, which is most of what we're doing today really. So we're in the prototyping phase. So you, you want to go try to test the, some of these back there? Uh, yeah, I'm going to in these pieces. There it goes. It'll twist into the back. Yeah. But we'll need to use the 3D printed connectors to bolt in the front one. So and those connectors will go right here. Yeah. If this car takes off quick and their head falls back. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that it's definitely, so we're going to yeah. put some real stress on it, make sure it's strong. 1.129. This needs to be offset from the top right here, like the distance from the edge of the circle to the top right here. Oh, that's just be, how far you want It needs that. to okay. be 1.29. 1.129. No, okay, I'll, I'll measure the angle real quick for that. All right. yeah. We checked off list what we need on the car for safety reasons and what the parent needs and wants. And so basically we decided to attach five point harness because that's needed and a back of camera because they can't turn their heads around. And they wanted a table, so we're building a table out from the front of this car and then dragging it out. So I need to connect it, having it somewhere around here to connect to this to make it turn for it to mount the servo. Okay, and what about the back? The back should be fine for right now. Okay. We need to work on five-point harness and the turning. That's most important. Well, the five-point harness, that's what we need to do to get the... For mounting, yeah. Mounting, so... Yep. Okay. I guess it's the new challenges and everything that you have to face and think of different ways around about how sometimes this doesn't work and you have to go back and you have to try it again and again until eventually you get it right. I think it would be really beneficial for the next generation to have something this intimate that really shows them what a work environment really is. Just wired up the back so it's a little bit wide down towards the bottom so we're going to have to bring that down. The, the part uh, that keeps yeah. falling off. And that's yeah. part keeps falling off? No, or is, it's it, the other one. is it the other one? Yeah, it's, it's actually right. this piece. When we have allowed the students oh, yeah, to make these decisions, they have taken this project farther than, than we could have. If I could not ask them to do something and create a car that would be as good as what they have created on their own. We're proud of our work as being efficient problem solvers and overcoming um, the obstacles we've face so far, mainly the wiring and um, the overall design process. Project-based learning is about the journey towards mastery of content instead of the product students will produce. At the Center for Advanced Technical Studies in Chapin, South Carolina, students use professional notebooks to document their process and to reflect on their learning while working in collaborative teams. The deal is, we gotta get measurements of when it goes uphill, almost going uphill or on flat surface, and we gotta see how many um, power the engine is getting to go up, up that hill. It's gonna go down now, that's the highest. Okay, okay. that's good. Every time we do a project, we gotta write data down, like what's the stuff we used, how do we use it, like how do we set it up. At the end of every project, we either do a report or a presentation with our team, 
And it's important to have the data and what you did so we actually remember for the presentation. So now the Lotus 100, the speed is about 110. It's important for us when we're working in a group to make sure that everyone's on the same page so to not leave anybody behind. Working as a team is like the best thing. It's easy to get each other like, oh, we just did this, copy our notes now. We'll show you how to do this. And he'll show us how to do that because we didn't know, we, we, we didn't do it, but he did. So he gonna show us how he did it, how he set it up. It also like helps speeds up the process of doing everything because then you can have people do different stuff at the same time. Like they were testing the power from the outlet while I was creating the hydrogen fuel cell. Yeah. Just do these four because these are the most important. We don't really care about fuel. Yeah, so like whatever these three are. Or four because yeah. the load to the two. All the stuff here was from the previous project. It's helping us going into this project, which in this project, we're doing this thing about the um, fuel cells and the battery packs. Before we did this, we were putting them in um, charts, and before we, and then after we do that, we're gonna put it in graphs. And then at the end of every project, there's a presentation, and we put all the stuff in here. She's been taking pictures, and we put it in the presentation for all of our um, team members in this class to see and look and compare their projects. The power seems to be staying the same. Yeah. It's just only because it's coming on outlet, it's unlimited power. Yeah, especially because it's, it's consistent on the speed. You can't go without a failure. If you didn't fail, you did something wrong. It's because you have to fail. When they're designing something, they don't go through one prototype and then, all right, it's done. You have to go through many. It's not just negative that, you, oh, you didn't get it right. No, it's good because then you, it's easier to learn what you did wrong. Why did they say you have to rename it? Oh. It helps in all classes. Like, it makes you more observant. And so, yeah, it makes, like, I look for very, details now more than I did before because like I've noticed things.